Welcome back to Master Your Ash. I'm here with Doctor. Good Doctor. Yes, Stephon exactly. <laughs> yes. How are you, sir? Good, Good how are you? you? I am, Good to see you. I'm fantastic, right? Yeah. You're smoking a little Rojo? Rojo in the morning. Good start, right? Yeah. Connecticut rapper, not too strong, mild, you know, to wake up. Yeah, no, this is the uh, the perfect uh, accompaniment. I went and grabbed some espresso, so we're Exactly. Go. It goes very well with the espresso and a, a Rojo in the morning, especially shorty. It's my daily smoke in the morning, yeah. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. So, talk to me about what's new. What's upcoming? How have you yeah. been? Yeah, so I've been great <laughs> traveling since January from factories to factory, do some work, working on the new projects mm -hmm. and in the States now for two weeks. And yeah, love it. At TP right now, what's new? Let me tell you what's new. So we have, we present our core line here, the Rocco, uh, Azul, we have the Dom Patron, Gatsby, Gringo. But what's new? That's the thing, that's what you are asking for. We, always, yes, yes, so. Always. We will send out soon our Limitada, the family reserve made at KBF. Um, it has, this time it's a Toro. Okay. That's a Limitada, 700 boxes limited. We are already sold out, like it's a Limitada. But more interesting for the United States, what's missing in our portfolio for the United States? A Maduro. Okay. So we're gonna release a Maduro, actually two Maduros, one made in Nicaragua, one made in Dominican Republic, both with San Andres wrappers, the one, the Oscura from the Dominican Republic, has a binder from Indonesia and a filler from Dominican Republic, whereas the one Morado made in Nicaragua, San Andres wrapper, binder and filler Nicaragua. So we, we're gonna have two Maduros in our portfolio, so you know that we can go deeper into the US market, because I know the US market, they love Maduros. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And are those going to be released under the Lambert family name? Yes. Okay. So the one going to be uh, the Morado going to be the Lambert 1675 and the Oscura, the 1593. Uh, it's also out, uh, it's also like our family crest, yeah. Awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. You know that I'm a big fan I know, of yeah. the Lambert family cigar. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. like it's, uh, I think that, you know, dollar for dollar, it's very, very hard when you're competing in that spectrum, yeah. right? Yeah. But I think that you do a great job. Yeah, and thank you. One appreciate of the best. Thank you, I've appreciate had, it, you know, thank you. Sure. Some changes to the labels, right? It actually says Lampert on the yes. retailer series it's, now? It's especially like on the Golden Retailer ones and on the Dom Patron Gringo and the, uh, the Gatsby. Okay. We, 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 what we did, we changed the label so the design is similar, but we put our logo on it, Lampert Cigars, and instead of two bands, we only have one band. Okay. So to uniform it, and it's also easier for the factory just to put one band instead of two bands on the cigars. Because I looked at, I think was it your, your review, I looked it up, because sometimes people can get confusing with the, the old band, because there's not Lampert on it, so it's like, okay, we have to brand it more. So we took all the feedback that people gave us, and yeah, we work hard to improve, 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 because we're a very young company. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, like that's um, that's the beauty of the channels, right? And it's not just my channel, it's yeah. all the channels, yes. is that we can maybe provide some feedback, yeah. consumer base. And right? I really appreciate it, the feedback, because I learn, you know, I'm still learning, like how can I improve? It's always about improvement. When I tried the cigar, I was just like, man, I want to tell everybody that this is a Lampert because yeah. I don't know if somebody sees it in a shop and yeah. they're going to know right off the top exactly, of their head. Exactly, yeah. You know, that was really my only issue. Yeah, yeah, and I you, know. you, you saw yes. it. It was done. Yes, <laughs> I really appreciate the feedback because with feedback, you know, we can grow. This yeah. helps us a lot. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Stefan. Is there anything else that you would like to say to the audience about, you know, just <laughs> the event about yourself, about yeah. the brand, anything? Just I want to say thank you for the support, and if you want to get, uh, if you want to be like updated, like what's coming next, sign up for our newsletter, LampertCigars.com. We will send out like on a monthly basis, like newsletters, what's coming next, where, uh, where I do events, so you just get, you know, you just be updated what's happening with Lampert Cigars. Yeah. Well, thanks again, brother. Thank man. you. I appreciate it. you squaring five minutes. Thank you. I know you got plenty of orders to punch uh, yeah. because. You know, I'm busy, yeah, you, you but make, good. you make great stuff. Yeah, so thank you, appreciate it. Thing. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Welcome back to Master Your Ash. I am here with my good buddy, Vlad. How you good. doing, brother? Fantastic, man. Good to see you again. Good to see you uh, too, it's always man. such a pleasure to You're share a cigar. You're always in the background on the videos. I think that for PCA, you were yep. getting a massage yeah. oh, in your that gold was a, jacket. That was the greatest investment of all time. We made a deal where if people spent a certain amount, they get 
15 minutes in the chair and it was incredible. The best investment of all time. Are so, you going to bring that back for PCA? 100%. Okay. I, and in the meantime, I've used it, so I can't really write it fully off. So it's probably like 50-50. So. If the IRS is watching, please do not come and see flat. Absolutely. <laughs> no, only, I'm only rolling off half of it, so it's fine. There you go. Um, so, so we're here to talk about, we have we have some new additions coming 100%. out. 100%. Talk to the people, let them know. So what we got. two things. This is a... a this is my own brand. This is a very small project that I did, and this is my interpretation, of focusing on interesting or old or very hard to find tobacco. So the first one, which was blended by Hendrik Kellner Jr., he basically, I asked him, I told him where I kind of wanted to go, and he took me there. This combines a total of 50 plus years worth of aged tobacco with a limited amount of basically 3,000 cigars made because we ran out of tobacco. There couldn't be more made. And you have the full transparency where everything's written down. The final box comes with magnets and all the boxes are numbered. So it's a classic six by 49 pyramid. Absolutely incredible. Um, and again, it's named Assam. I'm a sommelier, so kind of references that part. Um, and I think the tagline flows well as like all fine things produced in limited quantities. Uh, I'm very, very happy about this. This is going to ship to retailers in about a week. So I expect to see it, let's call it second week of March on the shelves. I uh, completely sold out, so I will post the list of retailers as well and like everybody who got it. I'm very, very happy. This is an incredibly complex cigar that just, it goes like this. It has a very gradual climb. A crescendo it, maybe? A cresce like it crescendos in the last third incredibly well. Then the second one, and I'm extremely proud of this one, this comes out of Cavalier, Cavalier's factory in Honduras. I, I, this one wasn't guided. So this I made by basically, I blended this, I put it together. We smoked the burritos and said, hey, this is really cool. I want to combine these ingredients. I rolled it very crappily, might I add. <laughs> um, it looked like a dolma. So if you ever had dolmas, like you know exactly what I'm oh, talking yeah. about. I smoked it loose draw all of these things but I'm like there's something in here so I gave it to Brian from Cavalier he smoked it he's like man this is really good like let's get the pros to roll it so they did I tried it fell in love with it um, so I did this last April all the cigars were rolled in June of last year so they're over six months worth of aging right now and you have it on the back here where it says limited production roll June 2022 the next setup is going to end and you have Damaris, who actually checked them out. So if there's ever an issue, Damaris, <laughs> we know who you are. Yeah. Um, you can see that the logo is actually refers to both very near and dear things in my life. So the grapes, they transform into tobacco leaves. And then again, full transparency, what the actual blend is, the actual ages. And again, like all fine things, produced in limited quantities. Made in a five by 50 Robusto with a $13 MSRP. The KBF one is 30, comes in a five count box. This comes in a 10. And again, very small, limited amount of retailers are gonna have it. Um, this is ready to ship and it's actually already en route to some of them. So hopefully awesome. end of next week, it'll be live. Awesome. Uh, profile is very, the highlight of this is Honduran, Honduran Broadleaf. So I'm not a huge fan of Broadleaf for whatever reason. And when I smoked the Honduran Broadleaf, I fell in love with it. It has this, incredible sweetness to it, depth of flavor, full flavor, like on a scale of one to five, it's a four and a half, five, just intensity of flavor. This sweet cereal grain-like you note, know, think like, I don't know if I can mention brand name cereal, just for- uh, You could say that it's kind of like a whiskey mash almost, like yes, cereal grain Yes, grains yes, absolutely. It, right? That's a much cleaner way without having the big guys go after yeah, me. Yeah, no Kellogg's. Uh, no yes, Kellogg's, absolutely, no none of that. So <laughs> very sweet grain-like sweetness of it in cereal. Um, and then that's really the highlight. It's also highlighted by uh, Mexican San Andres with uh, Viso Jalapa to give you the sweetness. There are chocolate, very, very beautiful, and just an incredible experience. Um, this was truly made by me and for my own palate. So I, you know, one of the questions was like, well, what if, you know, they don't end up selling? And I'm like, great, I have 5,000 cigars that I can enjoy smoking. <laughs> uh, luckily they are all pre-sold as well. So they'll be out to retailers hopefully end of next week. Well, 
I know that I'm looking forward to it. Like I said before, you know, you've been in the background on a couple of interviews here and there. We were really excited just in talking about 100%. the fact that you were bringing something to market that we could really like 100%. kind of promote and get behind. And I really hope that you'll accept my invitation. We'll maybe, you know, film something together where we're sitting there, we're smoking, we're pairing here in Vegas, and we send 100%. that out as well. As soon as people can get this in their hands. Absolutely. And, and I can't share, wait the, share it with us, you know? Absolutely. I can't wait to do it. Also, I got to mention, I totally snagged his pocket square because it matches. So thank you for that, buddy. That's a. That's I knew a nice what I was touch. doing today, yeah, man. Exactly. I knew what the exactly. mission was. Exactly. Actually, the the purple thread matches the Som ring as well. So uh, <laughs> the name of the cigar actually refers to Bordeaux BDX for short. Um, so it's kind of meant to be referencing a, a wine region in France and kind of give you that elegance of it along with power. So I'm very excited for you guys to try it and then tell me. Is if it? you don't like it, there's only one person to blame. Is there a suggested pairing that you have for this? There is. Believe it or not, a well-aged Bordeaux. Okay. okay. A well-aged Bordeaux, 100%. Okay, okay. So, uh, so Rioja uh, as well. Okay. Um, and then for spirits, we can go down the list. Um, can I mention brand name Suburbans? Yeah. Okay. You Angel, can do whatever the hell you want. Angel, cigar, Angel's man. Envy uh, port cast finish, absolutely incredible. We're gonna cut and edit that one. No, I'm just playing. It's good. It's good. I'm Angel's kidding. <laughs> port cast. Um, Little Glen Morangi. Yeah, yeah, Glen Morangi. Oh, my favorite one. Absolutely. Glen, Glen Morangi 10. The Quinta Ruban as well. The La Santa. Incredible yeah, pairings. Yeah. So they're 10 in the La Quinta and the, the Quinta Ruban and La Santa are going to be 14, 14 years with the Cascade, uh, with the Sherry Cask or the Port Cask finish. My absolute favorite. And again, if you are going to treat yourself, get an 18 or a Signet. And if you do, call me because, like, I want a piece of that. Yeah, if you get a Signet, call me too. Okay. 100%. Well, I cool. mean, looking forward to this, I'm excited. Man. We're going to have a blast. I'm excited. man, it's your year. <laughs> Thanks. Good to see you, brother. Thank you again. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Hey, Sam. Welcome back to Master Your Ash. I'm here with Alec, courtesy of Casa Cueva Cigars. Alec, brother. Thank Thanks you for, for having me a couple on. of minutes, man. Of course. By all means. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, no. Well, thank you for being on. And, I mean, we just got done smoking the... Sacre Nueva. Yeah. We had the Robusto on the channel. Yes, sir. It was absolutely fantastic. Thank you for... Inviting me with the double perfect to try Of course, out. of course. You know, I, I said on the review I wanted to try, you know, the rest of the line, being that the Robusto kind of blew me away. And our, it is classified as a Robusto, right? Even though it's not a 54. Exactly. Why it's still a 54 Robusto. So we actually fell in love with this on a previous project. Our patrimonial also carries a Robusto Gordo size. It's something that we personally consider, my grandfather better said, a classic traditional Robusto gauge. Okay. And because of which, something that we hadn't used previously, when a patrimonial was launched, it became essentially a morning smoke for my father. A lot of individuals fell in love with that specific size. And that little bigger gauge that you end up getting from it, a lot more aromatic notions, some nuances get added to it. It's good to pick up on those underlying tones, personally speaking, anyway. So we went with that with the Sangrenova as well, uh, not only for that classic look, but also just due to the fact that you're going to get a little more bang for your buck due to the gauge size. Makes total sense. Yes, sir. And I think that there's a, a tremendous value, right, was one of the things that I spoke about in the review even with that cigar because it's priced right, you get great flavor off of it, and you get a nice length too Thank with you. the smoke like that. I mean, what is it, four and three quarter? Yes, sir. Four and three quarter. So four and three quarter, you say that to somebody, they're like, ah, it's probably going to be a short cigar, dog walk, or whatever they want to call it nowadays, right? <laughs> but in a 54, burning slow, like almost pretty much a full press, right? Yes, sir. I, I think on that, too. Like, it's, uh, it, it stays with you for a minute. Like, you can, you can hang out and enjoy that. So absolutely fantastic. Probably back nine, whatever you want to do. The whole line. The whole concept behind it was, I'm very peculiar, I've smoked a plethora of cigars, to be told. I used to work on a retail side of things way before I started full hand with my father. Um, and that being said, something that really resonated with me was full in flavor rather than full in strength. And for that, I like to personally sit down and take my time with my cigars. So something that you can consider a quicker smoke to some, for me personally, I'd probably take another half hour in terms of that smoke. It's just a personal preference, but I really do like to enjoy whatever I'm smoking, whether it's brand new or whether it's something that we create, let's say. Right. So, what is kind of on the horizon for you, for Casa Cuevas, for like, you know, the, the future now? I mean, like, it is the new blood, right? That, yes, sir. That is, that is the whole entire, you know, terminology. So, what, what does the new blood have in store for the future? Wow. So, right now, with the new position of, under brand development, 
There's a couple things in the works going forward for 2024. Sadly, this year, we're kind of on the fence about launching something in particular, otherwise known as the Mandaria Oscuro, which is essentially the counterpart to our sledgehammer, the one I'm smoking right now. It's a relatively spicy cigar, but we've always wanted to give it a brother, so to speak. And for the longest time, we've wanted to play around with Brazilian leaf. Very hard to find. So thus, now we're going to the factory much more often to kind of come around and create that brother, so to speak. It won't be with Brazilian, sadly enough, but I guarantee you it will be a Maduro. It will be a solid smoke, very rich and creamy. As of right now, the prototype does have Mexican San Andres on it, but that doesn't mean we can't tweak it further down the line. So that's going to be tremendous. And the other one, which I can't talk too much about, it's already coined 1881. It will be coming out in 2024. It is a traditional, traditional blend, something that my great grandfather ended up creating way back in the day. Now, this gentleman in particular wasn't a blender by any means. He was just essentially a guajiro, a country farmer. That's all he knew, was how to plant cigars and how to really procure them and everything else. So that being said, bringing that blend into our fold is something that we've been meaning to do for a very, very long time. We just didn't really have the means as to how to do it. And now with my new position, that is my next project. Really to get something similar to that notion, something that I personally smoked, very aged, mind you, but it was delicious. And I'd love to bring it to our fold if possible. So that's my next project. Like I said, I can't talk too much about it. Um, I will say it is that medium plus the full body. But beyond that, we're gonna keep that under wraps. The biggest thing for this year is that Mandario Oscuro. Um, and we'll see, we'll see what happens. You saw the review. Yes, sir. You see how, you know, I kind of, I, my background is in spirits, you know, as a mixology guy. I like to pair things with cigars. I always feel as though that, you know, they're both commodities of civilization. Throughout human history, we've taken both of them with us, tobacco, grapes, whatever it was. We plant them, we harvest, we ferment, we, we distill when it comes to spirits. <laughs> Some of the grapes we don't, you know, we leave those back and make wine, whatever it is, it is. But tobaccos too, you know, it's like a brother sister kind of. I call them oh, commodities yes. of civilization. Indefinitely. Right? And I always feel like the two of them are better together than they are separate. So, for you, I, I don't know if you if you imbibe in alcohol, but if you do have a drink, what are you usually drinking when you're smoking a custom with So, and I gotta give credit where it's due, uh, our Arizona broker, Brandon Walsh from Cigar Mechanic, was the individual that really put me onto it. For the longest time, I've essentially paired up Plan Granova specifically with an Old Fashioned, with Four Roses in particular, but there's something about the mix. I love it. I lo I, I, I'm at a very much lack of words, unlike you, or yeah, very much unlike you. I don't have that background. <laughs> but that being said, that is something that I will always gravitate to, specifically when smoking San Nueva. And it's interesting because not only does it complement within certain regards, especially with that little orange and the bitterness that it carries, but there's enough of a contrast where it'll sharpen some of those underlying tones found inside the Sangre Nueva. And it just brings out the beauty in it, personally. I, I love it. I think that, you know, cocktails are, they're, they're not underappreciated because I do believe that there are a plethora of cigar smokers that oh, yeah. enjoy cocktails with their cigars. Definitely. I personally feel like with whiskey, it's one of the easiest ways to pair it with cigars because for me, it's a little bit of a harder pairing. I know that there are a lot of Scotch, you know, traditionalists out there, but if you can throw it in a cocktail and enhance those flavors and then also bring in a little bit of extra sugar, maybe some fruit notes, stuff like that, to a whiskey that may or may not traditionally have it in the blend, I think that it's a win-win, especially for the cigar experience. So that makes Definitely. a ton of sense, man. I like an old fashioned. Me too. Especially, I like more roses too. That's a great whiskey. <laughs> it is. Uh, well, thank you so much, Alec. I really appreciate it, brother. Thank you for send, you know, spending some time. Thank you, Mike. Letting everybody know on the channel what's new, what's upcoming, and then also just the appreciation, man, for what you're putting out there currently. Brother, thank you. Thank Absolutely. you so much for having me on, and thank you guys for keeping this going. Absolutely, man. We'll see you all soon. Thank yeah. you, brother. That was amazing.